Okay, first things first, let's go find a version of Linux that is extremely lightweight. Um, you're welcome to run whatever you want. Bodhi was what the, the first one that popped up on the list here. Called that good. And actually, I didn't initially search for Bodhi Linux. I initially searched for um, light Linux distros. But grab that one, downloaded it. It's about 706 megs. I guess before we do much more here, though, I'm going to have to get that USB stick. And we will plug that back in. Have a 64 gig USB 3 drive. Um, something that got from the SANS course a while back. And I think I must have had two copies of that one. Because typically I like to keep all their images around. Anyways, I want to select the image that we just downloaded. Don't know what other ISOs might be on here. Junk, more junk, and more junk. Select the target. We do not want to overwrite my external hard drive. I finally bought something after my wife's computer crashed a while back, so we'll choose the 64 gig drive that only currently has 32 gig free. I don't know if it uh, broke that up into two 30 gig drives or what. I'm not going to bother with that, but we'll hit continue, and we will hit flash. It's going to prompt. It wants writes, basically. To overwrite that, sure. 740 megs. It is started and it is moving right along. So did you ever have just one of those days where nothing seems to go right or everything was going right? Um, just was in the process of making the Etcher video uh, showing how to make the bootable media for this and it should have clued me in that when it said 32 gig and I knew that the memory stick I had was 64 gig I just overwrote the memory stick for the camera that I'm now recording this on and uh, I get to record this whole video again anyways welcome back chatter on the wire um, today we're going to take a look at the atomic pie some bio settings and installing Bodhi Linux on here it was the first uh, small version of Linux that came up on it. My original plan was to um, try something like Windows 95, uh, Windows XP, all of that. Okay, so at this point in time you can see that I have, and we'll get back to that previous conversation, but you can see that I have date, time all set here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hit the reset button on the Atomic Pi. Excuse me. Um, when I first saw this, I thought it was actually a reset button, like for power. If it, say, the OS had hung or anything else, so I didn't just have to uh, pull the power out. No, it is actually a reset button, kind of like you would have on a tablet or any other modern compute device that you may need to do, basically do a factory reset on. So let's go ahead and hit the reset button. It has restarted at this point in time, and we're going to hit delete on the way back up, get back into the BIOS, eventually. Okay, so at this point in time, hitting the reset button on the side of the Atomic Pi has completely reset it to factory defaults. Uh, the current time is 5.32, so 17.32, but first let's... I don't remember how to do this. Today's date is 06 25, I think it's the 25th, 2019, Tuesday. That sounds right. And the time is 17.32. Okay, so we have date time set. Do not hit the reset button again. Uh, we want to go into the network stack. I do not plan on booting this with Pixie Boot at all, so we're going to disable that. That should help um, speed the boot process up a little. It's not going to be much. Um, on the, I believe it's the Southbridge? No. Northbridge. You can actually go in and modify 
how much memory you're providing to the graphics. I'm not going to do much graphics wise on this, so I'm going to leave it at 32. Um, I do want to remove Quiet Boot. I like to see uh, the main BIOS window there. Even with that disabled, it decided it still wants to leave these here, so let's disable these. Disable that one as well. So Ubuntu is the actual name on the USB stick that's in there right now. So let's go ahead and save the changes and reset. So at this point in time, it's going to go ahead and boot up off that USB and should prompt us with an install option. Uh, this version of Linux or distro is not one I've actually ever used before. Um, I just picked it because it was the first lightweight Linux that came up on the Google search that I did. So once the menu comes up here, we'll tell it to do a full-blown install. Oh, yes, every time you do a BIOS change like that, it decides it wants to reboot twice. Okay, so we're going to do a direct install of Bode Linux. The very first time I tried to do an install, it actually did fail. Um, it, get, it prompted me for, with a option to then go into the GUI to see the error messages. I didn't see anything that specifically stood out to me. I started um, videotaping the next one on boot and that install went fine. So it was not an issue specifically or it may have been something specifically with the um, current El Ubuntu install that was on there or it may have just been dumb luck, I don't know. Um, last install I did of this from start to finish going into the BIOS making modifications there and telling it to download updates um, took me about 17 minutes all said and done in this recording I am not going to tell it to do the updates during the install process we're just going to have it do the, the base install and I am not going to configure my wireless um, currently I do not have any of the wireless dongles or antennas hooked up to it so even though my AP is only six to eight feet away, it is not getting a very strong wireless uh, connection. So I don't know if that slowed down the install at all, just due to slow download speed or not. But since I'm not actually planning on keeping this uh, distro on here, I do not plan on uh, kicking off the updates while we go through this. So it's been about three minutes now at this point since we did the last reboot. I want this in English. No internet access for right now. Oh, can I uncheck? No, can't uncheck. Let's see. Do I have? Go ahead and give it a wired port then. Let's see if this makes things any better. And if it's going to be smart enough to detect this now after the fact. Oh wait, the download updates did uncheck. Well, we'll see what happens here. So over the course Let's go ahead and erase the whole disk. Not going to encrypt it. So last night I played around a bit with this. I really wanted to see about getting an old operating system like Windows 95, 98, XP installed on this, and I didn't have any luck. Um, I even tried Windows 7. I did see one forum post that potentially, if I would have even got Windows 7 installed on it, I would have probably had problems. Because uh, Windows 7 did not have drivers for eMMC. E um, but um, in the end, I did not have any luck trying to get uh, these older OS's to actually work on a USB bootable media. I'm not sure if that was just user error or if this really does come down to the whole UEFI versus the previous um, 
boot standards. Uh, I used to do a lot of this type of work, but that was in the, I mean, I was really big into building my own computer, understanding all the bits and parts, but this was back in the 90s, and now we're, what, 2019? Um, my interests have shifted. I enjoy playing with the electronics here or there, but I'm not going to understand and dig into them like I used to. Uh, too many other things are competing for my time and energy. I'm hoping that this install takes about 10-15 minutes. I will go ahead and stop talking here and we will do fast forward uh, times probably at least four if not ten. Well, I could skip it. It looks like it is going to go ahead and download all of the current updates. Uh, not a bad deal. So, while it's doing that, um, I will mention that when I was going through all of the old media that I had, um, I can't remember if I talked about that in this video or the previous one that got lost, but I do a lot of, or used to do a lot of passive OS fingerprinting stuff. So. I kept a lot of these old OS's around. I have copies of Windows. Uh, it was a Linux distro that promised to be just like Windows XP, and of course that never happened. And then there was BOS that kind of came out as a filler there, which I believe it has come back, and I don't know if it made it anywhere as Haiku or something like that. Um, I saw it a year or two ago, maybe three or four now, it all starts to run together. But uh, somebody was back behind that project, and I think it looked like they were rewriting it again. Um, but it is amazing what's changed in technology, uh, what issues we've had to deal with over the last well, 30 years that I've been doing this versus um, what problems that actually are still around just like they were back then or we sort of fixed it for, uh, for quite a while and then a new industry such as say the car manufacturers start adding all this technology and then we start running into the same problems that we dealt with back in the 90s and then the 2000s and 2010s and um, it's just a never ending uh, cycle. A uh, new group comes up, doesn't pay attention to what the generation or previous groups dealt with and just goes, hey, we're going to do this. Um, let's revisit what history has taught us in this field and try to stop doing the same uh, boneheaded things over and over and over. Uh, things are getting better, but it is amazing how many things that we still see today that we dealt with 10, 15 years ago um, and how they just keep coming back. Okay, so it is now 17.46, so 14 minutes from start to finish. I don't know if that was a little faster than last time, um, or if I just lost track of time before. But anyways, 14 minutes, BIOS changes, me blathering, doing the install here, uh, also downloading updates during that install. Here in a second should prompt me to pop the USB drive out and then it will do its initial boot. Um, the first boot of this distro does take longer than future boots. Um, I'm assuming that's because it's going in and making uh, the initial modifications for the GUI and writing some of the stuff out to disk. So I think this first boot will take about 35 seconds, maybe 45. Um, we will for fast forward through this. Okay, now that the first boot is done, we're going to tell it to reboot, and we will do a general timer, at least in my head. Uh, I'll have numbers going along with the other voices. Anyways, one thing I did notice on this, it does seem to take longer to reboot than El Ubuntu did. Well, or it'll prove me wrong this time, because last time I tried it, it did, so who knows.
and since I'm getting just a dark screen and not the initial bio screen, um, maybe this time I decided just to kill the image until it started started booting back up. Uh, though this time I do have networking plugged in, which historically I have not. Still getting a periodic blink on the networking, so um, it is either transmitting or receiving traffic. That has ended at this point, so the TCP IP stack may have finally powered down. I guess maybe I'll know later when I go back to the video. Maybe I told it to shut down and not restart. I'll give it a few more seconds here. Though as far as I know, pulling the power on EM EMMC is not the same as pulling it on a uh, SD card. So there is that. Okay, my patience has grown thin. Pull the power. Plugging it back in. And we'll start our countdown. So I get about 24-25 seconds, uh, much better than the 30 plus, much, I don't know, I guess it's in the eye of the beholder. No idea what this distro has on it versus the Ubuntu one, um, but again I just want to do a, a video on replacing Ubuntu with another uh, Linux install on this. If there are specific distros out there that anyone recommends, let me know. Um, I think I'm going to play with uh, Pi-hole on this here, thanks Crime Stoppers. Um, I've known about that product forever but hadn't really spent much time on that so my goal actually with this is to go ahead and throw that or some other products like that on it. Um, I probably will throw Satori on this as well so I can do some fingerprinting with that and I still do uh, need to put a video together specifically on Satori, the old Windows version versus the Linux version on passive OS fingerprinting and um, pros and cons to the new version that I wrote in Python versus the old version. Anyways, thanks for joining me. Send a like, drop me a note, whatever. Catch you next time.